Welcome to St. Andrew United Church of Christ and to this midweek reflection. We're glad to have you tuning in. Thanks for being here. Today, I want to tell you about another UCC first, something that happened first in the United Church of Christ, our denomination. Or in this case, it happened with the Congregationalist Church, who would later become the United Church of Christ. So it's a story about some of our forebearers in the faith. It was 1839, and it was a defining moment for the abolitionist movement. The Amistad was a slave ship. Perhaps that name's familiar. There was a movie out about it just a few years ago. In 1839, African captives, members of the Mendai tribe of Sierra Leone, broke their chains and seized control of the schooner Amistad. And they forced it to sail to the shores of Connecticut, which is where they happened to be near. And then their freedom was short-lived because the government arrested the slaves and charged them with piracy and murder and classified them as salvage property. The 53 Africans were sent to prison pending hearing of their case before the United States Circuit Court in Hartford, Connecticut. They were later freed from jail in New Haven by the United States Supreme Court decision that they were not property and they were eventually returned to Africa. That's the good end of the story. During their incarceration, the Africans were befriended by the people of the Congregationalist Church who raised money to clothe and feed them, and they actually rallied to their legal aid, also helping their case get to the Supreme Court. These individuals, whose congregationalist legacy is now part of the United Church of Christ, formed the original Amistad Committee. And that Amistad Committee continued to meet after the captives were freed so they could think about what else they might do to help the issue of slavery. That group later evolved into the American Mission Association, the first anti-slavery missionary association in the United States. And that association is still alive and well as a part of the United Church of Christ under our United Church Board for Homeland Ministries. It's also exciting to know that the story was so important to our history that our United Church of Christ national offices in Cleveland, Ohio, have given great tribute to the story there as well. There are oil paintings of the Amistad episode and its key African and Congregationalist protagonists. Right outside the chapel, these paintings are hanging. Here's one of them, and there's several. And then the chapel, that's on the other side of the wall where these paintings hang, was named the Amistad Chapel, and it was designed accordingly. I've been there, and it's absolutely a beautiful place to visit. Here's a picture of the chapel itself. The frosted art glass light fixture suspended from the ceiling is encircled with tiny lights that are meant to mimic the stars over the ocean. The communion table and other pieces are made from wood that comes from Sierra Leone, Iraqo wood. It's the same wood that was used to build the slave ship, in fact. And then throughout this space in the chapel, you see nautical shapes and themes and artwork. Every single thing in there has some meaning behind it. The chapel's oval-shaped sanctuary mimics the hull of a ship, and the curved shape of the high-backed seating resembles the interior of a boat. Carvings of a ship, a lighthouse, a fish, and an anchor grace the front of the tall, slender pipe organ as well. It's a beautiful chapel with an amazing story behind it. If you go to the United Church of Christ website, ucc.org, you can learn more about it and see more of the pictures of the beautiful artwork. 
It feels good to know that our denomination's headquarters have such a visible reminder of our forebears in the faith who fought for the abolition of slavery. We need that reminder still today, of course, because there is still racial injustice in our country, and we are still called, as people of faith, to work for justice and for peace in this day and in this time. 